Easy. Hello, today here we are with Brad, our Member of Parliament for Sandringham. And we're going to ask you a few questions today about the graffiti problem in Melbourne, or street art, as some people might put it. So do you think there's a fine line between graffiti and street art, and what is the difference in your opinion? Um, Elliot, great to join you, mate, and um, thank you very much for your interest in this particular area, because um, in my mind, it's actually there's a very clear distinction between what's graffiti uh, and what's street art. And I guess the easiest way to differentiate between graffiti and street art is to actually go out on the street and have a look. Yep. Um, here in Sandringham, the Sandy Street Art Project have been doing phenomenal things in the area. You just need to look at some of the walls that they have commissioned murals on. Yep. Or if you head down to Black Rock, uh, where together with Neighbourhood Watch, Black Rock and Sandringham Secondary College um, students, there was a mural commissioned for the um, Karakata Street car park there. Um, that's artwork. Um, that's street art. Um, and it actually really adds to our community. The graffiti is, is totally different. Graffiti is destructive. Graffiti is, um, you know, tagging of stuff um, inconsistently, um, use of bad language. Um, just, it, its purpose is destructive. It's not creative at all. Well, where do you think those people have gone <clears throat> wrong? You've fallen into that path, that vicious cycle with graffiti. What do you think we can do to combat it and get them probably using their talents for good and not defacing other people's property? Yeah. It's well, education, it's education, maybe? Yeah, look, I think it's really important for young people to understand that <clears throat> when you commit a crime such as that, and it is a criminal act, um, that you are potentially exposing yourself to be charged by the police, to be convicted of a crime, and that that actually carries serious consequences with it. So if you're a young person and you think it's cool to go tag something or cool to go graffiti something, well, think about the consequences. Think about being charged by police, being convicted of your crime, and therefore being restricted in what you do in the future. Yeah. So every time you apply for a job in the future, every time you put in a CV with a potential employer and they ask for a police record check, that's going to come up. And that's going to influence your employer as to whether you have a particular role or not. Forget about going to the US. You won't be able to get a green card. You won't be able to get entry into the United States if you've got a criminal conviction next to your name. So my encouragement to young people is, if you're doing it, please stop because it does end up being this cycle of, um, of activity and it actually limits and restricts your opportunities in the future. Yeah. Well, do you think on the other side of the spectrum, with those people that do those things, do you think respect to the police a bit better? Yeah, I think it's more um, about respect for our community. Look, the police have a job to do, yeah. Elliot, and, and their job is to try and make our community a safer place and to try and ideally prevent criminal activity taking place before it actually does. Uh, and if it does take place, then, you know, following up the bad guys and, and <clears throat> bringing justice for the victims of crime. So I think that should really be our focus. Um, and when you go and tag something, when you graffiti something in a really destructive way, I don't think the issue is with Victoria Police necessarily. What you are saying when you do something like that is that you don't care about your community. Um, and I think that's a pretty sad state of affairs. But how would we, in through the school education system, how would we influence those young minds that might be le led astray into this dark path of graffiti? How can we tell them that use your um, artistic nature for good and not for defacing property? How can we tell them that? What's the and not through the education program. Well, I think you've just put it really, really well, mate, actually. <coughs> um, people do have creative talents. They're really good things. Um, use your creativity for good, not for evil. Use your creativity to help build your community, not destroy your community. Um, use your creativity to encourage and uh, encourage other people around you, whether it be your own peer group or younger people, maybe even older people. Um, don't use it just for, um, for evil and for bad. Um, if you've got a talent, if you've got a gift, that's a wonderful thing. Don't waste it by putting yourself at risk of um, a conviction and then restricting your options down the future. Sally, well put, Brad.
Um, with the education system, yes, do you mate. think there should be a program in place to help these children or young adults from offending and making the unimaginable with defacing property? Should there be a way, like police and schools, for example? Police and schools would be a great idea, Elliot. Um, in fact, the last state election, um, my party, the Liberal Party, uh, went to the election saying that um, we would reintroduce the police and schools program. So when I was growing up in the area, I went to Stella Maris in Bay Morris and then to St Beads in Mentone. What a great school that is. Um, and we had a police and schools program uh, in primary school. We did. We had senior constable, then senior constable Scott Davis come and visit us in primary school. And it really re um, just removed this veil of secrecy, yeah, and um, broke down a barrier between young people and police. We're, because we knew what a policeman looked like, we were able to talk to one, we thought they were human, it was their opportunity to, um, I guess, humanise that profession. So our first interaction with a policeman as a young person wasn't in an adverse situation, it was in a classroom situation where we were learning about stuff. And where do you think the problem stems from, from their lack of respectful authority? Where do you think these young adults go, go astray, go down that dark path? Yeah, I think that's a complicated question um, it? and it's a complicated a of, answer as well. It opened a bit of can of worms there. It, it could, mate. I mean, <clears throat> you know, there are any number of reasons why young people, um, any person Do you think may... it comes from the parents or from the environment that they are surrounded in? It, it's, it's, it's complicated. I, I don't think there's sort of one pinpointing factor that you can say, you know, it's because of your home environment or your lack of parental attention that you have ended up um, graffitiing stuff or that's sparked a, a cycle or a life of crime. Um, I certainly think that having a stable home life, yeah. you know, if you do have a stable home life with a uh, a fa with all the family supports around you, and I realise that that's not always the case for, for young people these days, as the definition and makeup of families changes um, uh, with time. But you know, if that support is in place, it's less likely uh, that you will um, be led down that um, that path or that track. So, um, yeah, I think there is that. I think there's well, we know that there's greater um, anxiety um, and mental health issues amongst young people. Um, these days, and that could certainly factor into it as well. Um, and there are other um, uh, other circumstances as well, whether it be a bullying circumstance, whether it be a peer pressure circumstance, whether it be older siblings who are encouraging younger siblings to um, undertake sex activity. So, look, Ellie, if we knew exactly what was at the heart yeah. of um, uh, criminal activity starting, uh, it would be a silver bullet and we, we wouldn't be here. Yeah. There wouldn't be a need for Victoria Police, there would be no crime. Um, but I think it's actually quite a complex um, um, answer to actually get involved with that. Do you think some of these young adults that do get caught offending um, with graffiti, do you think they use the excuse of mental health <clears> as, a, as an excuse to effectively get away with what they're doing? Because yeah. I know about 30 years ago this wasn't really happening. Where do you think this has come from? So I, I'm of the personal view that I don't think mental health should be used as an excuse for a criminal act. Yep. Um, we know that mental health um, concerns can lead to a fragility within a human, um, which may mean that they have greater tendencies to act in a particular way. Um, but in my view, it should never be used as an excuse for a criminal act. Um, uh, and I would hate to see an example of where mental health is actually used as an excuse in that way yep. because it actually takes away the seriousness of mental health within the lives of people, young people as we're speaking about today um, and the need that they have to get the right supports and the right help in place uh, to help them um, uh, through their difficult times. And. As you're working in the Victorian government, in the parliament, do you think there should be a program in place where these young offenders, and correct me if I'm wrong, if there is a program in place for them, that they should have like a like a designated set of like wall or land wherever in CBD, and they have like a free paint zone, and they can do whatever they would like. Do you reckon that could be a good idea? I, I've or seen. Um, a, yeah, look, I'm I'm totally open to that. I mean. Start? 
<clears throat> if there are um, spaces in our community where um, young artists or budding artists can go down and, and um, have a bit of a paint and an experiment with those sorts of different techniques yeah. and stuff like that, yeah, go for it. No worries at all. Yeah. Um, but sadly, what we're seeing in our community at the moment is, um, frankly, destruction yeah. right around the place. You know, it's not artistic. It's not, um, it's not community building. Um, it's just bad. And um, well, t tell me your experience about it with the um, community cleanup you had a few few months ago. So now. yeah, so a couple of months back, we um, uh, within the Sandy Line closed for the Melbourne Metro Works. Yeah. Uh, a group of volunteers and I decided to um, go onto railway land and clean up graffiti. Um, as you would know, uh, going on the travelling on the Sandy Line or even the Frankston Line, uh, there's graffiti like throughout the entire rail corridor going into the city. Um, and it's just unsightly. So um, instead of just saying, oh, that's a problem and that's terrible and something should be done about it, we actually pulled on overalls ourselves. We got some paint donated, you know, 30 litres of paint. And we cleaned up 30 metres of wall ourselves um, uh, with a group of about, um, you know, 10 or so volunteers. So sadly, uh, there's someone who's actually come back and defaced it again. And defaced it again, saying, Can I swear? Yeah, you can. I can. <laughs> saying, fuck clean walls on the outside of that. And, um, you know, that's just an example of someone who is destructive, someone who is, frankly, a criminal, turning their nose to a whole group of community people, community minded people who just want to clean up an unsightly mess. It's really not good enough, but this is the role of the state government. Yeah. And they're saying to me that um, graffiti can't be cleaned up on some of these walls. Well, it quite clearly can with what you've done. Yeah, but they're saying because those walls are actually about private property, right? So there's yeah. like a private house and there's a back fence and then there's railway land. Yeah. And so the state government is saying they can't clean up this wall, yeah. although it faces railway land, because they consider it to be private property. Yeah. But the homeowners can't clean it up either because they can't access the railway land to clean it up because it's unsafe to do so because there, yeah. there are trains going up and down it. Um, so the government's saying, meh, not my problem. Yeah, the, residents, the residents are saying, we want to clean it up yeah. and it's just all too difficult. So what I'm trying to do is just trying to figure out a way about how we can actually, how the state government can actually take responsibility for this. And come together and, and clean, come together and clean it up. Clean Melbourne up. And there are, there are volunteers, just like there was that day, who are willing to volunteer their time yeah. um, to clean up this sort of stuff, and they're really happy to do it, but they just need the cooperation of the state government. And do you also think, with the clean-up of Melbourne, if there's a project on that such a scale, yeah. do you think that would help maybe calm down Melbourne's supposedly gang problem? Maybe. Yeah, look, if there um, even is, is well, I, I think there is a snowball effect sometimes when it comes yeah. to criminal acts, and it can start with something like graffiti and then lead to yeah, other things if you take that well. out and then sure. other things come up. Um, so look, at, put it this way, Elliot, it can't be a bad thing if we clean up Melbourne okay. from unsightly, destructive graffiti. Um, I think it'll firstly look a whole lot better if we do. And maybe, just maybe, it'll have an effect of, um, uh, of uh, assisting with other criminal activity in the future as well. That's all, all for today. Thanks, Brad. Thanks very much for Thank joining you. me. Good on you. Thank Thanks, you. Mate. <laughs>